What's going on guys, it's Simo. So today I'm posing the question, should you buy Savage Strike? Now, I make one of these videos every time we get a new set because I feel like it's important to analyze these sets on a much deeper level to see how you can spend your money most effectively and get what you want out of a new set. So before we get into it, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you guys don't miss a single upload. And if you really love the content that I produce on this channel, consider supporting me on Patreon Patreon or becoming a YouTube channel member because it's thanks to people like Ricky that I'm able to bring you this content on a daily basis. So if you're interested, hit the join button down below or check out the links in the description. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. So I'm going to go ahead and switch on over here to TCG player and we're going to take a look at Savage Strike and some of the prices for the cards in the set. Now keep in mind, this is before the set has been officially released and all the prices you're gonna see here, they're gonna go down because it is pretty much, we're still in like pre-sale hype season. Everyone is just looking forward to just trying to get whatever they can, especially with YCS Chicago, like right around the corner. So that's obviously not helping, but I wanna take a look at this because I feel it's very important to look at these prices where they are now, and then keep in mind the fact that a lot of these prices are most likely going to crash. Now, a booster box of Savage Strike currently on TCG Player is about $68.75, and pretty much at your local game store or wherever you get a box of this set, it's gonna run you about $65 to $70. You might have to pay some tax depending on the kind of deal you can get from your game store or if you buy it online. So Pot of Extravagance is currently sitting at about $76, and Honestly, this might be one of the cards that is going to stay realistically this high just because it's that powerful, because it's an in-demand card for one of the strongest decks of the current format being Altergeist, there's a very realistic chance that this card is going to stay very high in price. Now, it could go down, it might go down to like the 50 or the 60 range, but basically, if you pull a pot of extravagance, you're feeling pretty good because you pretty much are gonna make your money back on your box just with this card alone if you decide to sell it, and then everything else you got in the box in addition to that was basically free. Now moving on down here, Fantastical Dragon Phantasme is about $65 as well. Again, this is probably going to go down maybe to the $50 or $60 range as prices start to settle once more of the product gets opened up. But again, this is kind of the other chase card of the set where if you pull it, you feel pretty good because then if you add everything else up that you get in your box, you're going to probably break even if not come out ahead and that's going to do pretty well. But beyond those two cards though, you look down here, Witch's Strike is about, about $40. Remember, Witch's Strike about a week ago when the sneak peek was going on was like one of the most expensive cards on here. It was like 70 and it's already down to 40. This is a card I highly anticipate is going to crash because especially after YCS Chicago when not a lot of people are going to be playing it, you might see it in a couple side decks just as a gimmick. This card is going to crash down very hard, I expect. And then you've got stuff like Psychic Wielder, which is down at like the $20 range. Again, this could go down to like, you know, the $15 range, maybe even 10. This is something that's very specific to a uh, rank three centric deck like Burning Abyss. And with Fairy Tail Snow getting banned, I'm not really sure if Wielder is actually going to be that crucial of a pickup. But this could be a card you might want to invest in later on because depending on, you know, maybe when Cherubini comes out in Dark Neostorm, Storm, Wielder becomes a very good extender in the deck again and you might just want to have your copy. So something to keep in mind there. But then we get down to the first ultra rare, Borload Savage Dragon. And so where I kind of want to take this discussion now is the ultra rare slot in general. Borolo Savage Dragon is currently sitting at $22. Now, this for an Ultra Rare is just absurd because there's no way an Ultra Rare is going to hold this price because Ultra Rares are in so much more plentiful abundance compared to something like Secret Rares. I mean, we're going to go ahead and just scroll on here to the next page and you're going to see there's going to be some Ultra Rares on here. Look, Danger Ogopogo is only $3.65. And so pretty much, you know, Ghost Meets Girl, $2. All the other Ultra Rares in this set are worth nothing. Thing, and the set hasn't even officially released yet. So there is no way that Borload Savage Dragon is going to be able to maintain this price point 
at all. It's just impossible. Now, not to say that the card is bad. The card is incredible, especially in decks that can run it like Pendulum, but you should not be spending $20 on this card. It's probably going to settle around 10. It's going to be like the best ultra rare of the set. But I think that's kind of what's unfortunate here is that we don't really have a lot of good chase secret rares or even just good secret rares in general in this set. And the same goes for the ultra rares. Now, I want to take a look here at Soul Fusion because Soul Fusion was rather interesting in this regard because, yeah, you had your Colossus. Colossus was your chase card. I mean, it's still sitting at 50 bucks. Suchinoko, again, a secret rare, but not part of Thunder, is still sitting at like 48. Trap Trick, one of the best generic trap cards we've had in a very long time, is sitting at 30 and Chaos Dragon Leviathan is at about 12. So you can see just the quality of the secret rares in comparison to something like the ones that are in Savage Strike. The other secret rares are a lot more generic, a lot more powerful, and be used in a much wider variety of different decks. And I think Soul Fusion did that very well. Now, the other thing Soul Fusion did very well is how they decided to handle the ultra rares, because if you come down here, Thunder Dragon Dark is still sitting at about eight bucks. Thunder Dragon Roar is still sitting about close to eight bucks as well. So the fact that Soul Fusion had these ultra rares that were a part of a basically mainstay tier one deck meant that you got a lot of value out of your box, not from the secret rares necessarily, but in the ultra rare slot. And these cards in particular have definitely held their value. Now, again, Soul Fusion isn't exempt from other instances of having bad ultra rares, because if we go on to the next page here, you know, orchestration is only a buck 50. You know, we've got some Noble Knight stuff, which is not even a dollar and Thunder Dragon Hawk for some reason isn't a dollar, but the other two are like eight bucks. That's a little bit weird to me, but in any case, going back to Savage Strike, it's interesting when you kind of compare the Soul Fusion to Savage Strike because it just seems that Soul Fusion was a much more well-rounded set in that regard. And that's what I really liked about Soul Fusion is that you were able to get a lot more value out of the cards themselves if you were to buy a sealed box or even just a couple packs compared to something like Savage Strike. Now, where I want to take this discussion is what you should do in terms of purchasing. Now, I'm always going to recommend you guys that buy the singles. And why is that? Well, the reason is very simple. If you're going to pay, you know, anywhere from 65 to $70 for a booster box, why not get the cards you want instead? So for instance, you know, if you want something like a playset of Psychic Wielders, look, they're 20 bucks a piece right now. They're probably going to go down to maybe like 15, maybe even 10. You could get a playset of Psychic Wielders and it's only going to cost you half of what it would have cost to purchase a booster box, but you're getting what you want for your Burning Abyss slash rank, uh, rank three turbo deck or whatever it is. So that's a really good deal right there because you're getting what you want. There's no way in hell you could get three copies of Psychic Wielder from a single box. So yeah, you might get one, but then you still need two more. So you're having to pay what, 40 bucks in addition to the 65 to 70 you already spent? That just doesn't make any sense. Same thing goes for some of the other archetypes types that are in this set because there are some pretty cool ones if you're interested in guard dragons you know guard dragons while again not one of the craziest archetypes but uh, the whole archetype is basically comprised of like super rares and uh rares and even commons in some instances so you could pick up an entire core of the set and still have money left over to purchase other cards you may want and you have the entire guard dragon core for yourself same thing goes for valkyries i mean i know valkyries actually have a secret rare in this set and they also have an ultra rare as well as i attempt to find that at the same time you know you could get a place at right here she's six dollars at the moment that's before being released meaning she's probably going to go down even cheaper so that means you could get a place out of her let's say it's six bucks so that's what 18 you could get all the rest of the valkyrie support cards and then you're still going to have plenty of money left over compared to if you were to buy the booster box itself and that's why i just highly recommend to go this route even if you want something as simple as three copies of subterra guru or three copies of aloof lupine for your thunder dragon deck. Those are just commons. You could pick those up for literally pennies, and those are going to be huge upgrades to your Subterror deck, your Thunder Dragon deck, whatever it may be, and then you can have the rest of that money that you would have spent on purchasing sealed product to buy other cards you want for your other decks instead. Now, I know I always sound like a bit of a broken record when I say, oh, you should always buy the singles, but this is exactly what I mean by that, just because the strength of Savage Strike is not as strong as it could be, and when you just look at the overall 
overall cards in here. Again, you can even take something like the Trickstar support cards. The most expensive Trickstar card is Trickstar Korobane, which is only sitting at about, what, $7 right now? And again, this is another ultra rare. Ultra rares are not going to maintain that high of a price point. Even if Trickstar Korobane stays at seven bucks, it's a one of. So like, you only need one of it and then you could get the other secret rare cards, which again, going on to the next page here, I believe the Trickstar uh, stage card, which was somewhere over here, maybe it was on the first page. Let me go back one. The Trickstar secret rare light stage or live stage, again, eight bucks. And you don't even play that many of them. It's not like light stage. It's not by any means a light stage. And then all the rest of the Trickstar support is like in the super category and below. So this is exactly what I mean when I say buy the singles because it's so much more cost effective. And yeah, if you love opening packs, that's perfectly fine too. I'm not trying to stop you or tell you, you know, basically how to spend your money, but I'm just trying to give you guys recommendations so that you can be a much more cost effective consumer and be more cognizant of what you're spending your money on but guys those are just my thoughts let me know down in the comments what you guys think about savage strike as a whole and what cards you're looking forward to picking up i'd really love to hear your thoughts so guys thank you so much for watching the video be sure to like the video as always subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh content and if you found this video informative consider supporting me on patreon or becoming a youtube channel member because just by showing your support in any way that you can you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. So thanks so much again, and we'll see you next time.